Hey, welcome to Banjo Blitz. Today we were going to do a setup video, but I got a great question in one of the comments from a viewer and I wanted to address it. And it's about tone and follow through. Specifically, how do we translate our follow through from the first string to our inner string? So let me read you the comment and then I'll address it. It's from a viewer named 12D3. I'm reading off the screen here, so excuse me while I look away from the camera. What about the other strings though? This works very well on the first one because you can really push beyond the fretboard, but with the other strings, that's physically impossible. Great question, and let's talk about that. So what this viewer is, is suggesting is that when you do a downstroke on your first string and you're looking for great tone and you're using the follow through technique that we covered in the last couple videos, and you're punching through that string to a target beyond, that works great for the first string because there's nothing in your way. You can clear that string on your downstroke and impact the head. But what happens when you try to move that technique to your inner strings where there's an, the next subsequent string, the next higher string, is blocking your path to get to the head? It's a great question. And the simple answer is you're going to still follow through, but instead of impacting the head of the banjo on your follow through, you're going to impact the next highest string. I want you guys to see how this works up close. So we're going to magically snap to the other camera. I'm gonna do a downstroke on my third string and watch what happens to my second string. You see how it is, I, this is super awkward because I'm standing up so I missed some of my notes, but you get the idea. You see that this second string is bending and bobbing under the weight of force of my downstroke as I punch through the third string into the second string. All right, back to the other camera, boom. Okay, so what you just saw is that second string is bending under the weight. So the second string is my new surface, like the head, that I'm attacking when I go through my chosen string, in this case, the third string. I'm plunging my hand down into the banjo, I'm colliding with the third string, I'm going past the third string, and the second string is like catching my, the force of my stroke and bending under the weight. And so that's what you wanna look for when you're trying to extract the most tone when you're hunting down those inner strings. You're still plunging through the strings, but you are bend, you're bumping into and colliding with the next highest string. That takes the place of the head surface that we hit after the first string downstroke. Now what about the thumb? Same kind of thing applies when you plunge your hand down into the banjo for a drop thumb and you want to get that tone. You need to part those strings. Ah, banjo cam, banjo blitz cam, let's use it again. Boom! Hey yo, Banjo Blitz Cam here. All right, so as I plunge down into the banjo for a drop thumb on the first and second strings, I am parting those strings. Look at that, that string, I, my thumb is going through the strings into the banjo so I can get that string with the meat of my pad. I don't wanna just get the edge of the pad. I'm plunging down, I'm parting the strings with force, lifting that string up for my upstroke and getting a nice sound. Hopefully that is clear. All right, back to the other cam. Whoosh. Okay. So I hope this works. I'm a little concerned about post-production time, but whatever, it's worth it. So the same rules apply when you're getting, when you're trying to get great tone out of your inner strings, you're still plunging into the banjo and seeking a target that is beyond the target that you're aiming at. Now the strings may get in your way. You've just got to get them out of your way. You got to force your way through it, both with your thumb as you're plunging and seeking that pad, seeking a good purchase on the string with your pad, and on your downstroke as you're doing your downstroke, you're plunging through the string and colliding with the next highest string. I hope this is clear. Please leave me comments if it is not clear and I will make it so. And uh, thanks to 12D3 for submitting that question. That's excellent. I love that kind of thing. If you guys have other questions that you want to see addressed on Banjo Blitz, I will be happy to do it. And uh, I will see you next time.